So welcome everyone to today's episode of Life in HD, where we invite special guests to come in and chat with us about human design in real life. And if you're new to this channel, I'm your host, Crystal Alferrero. I'm a human design guide and founder of the Human Design Academy. And today we're actually going to be exploring one incarnation cross that, you know, caused me a bit of confusion when I first started learning about it, but it's the right angle cross of the four ways. We're going to talk about how this looks like in real life. And we're going to talk about so much more with the lovely Karen Jackson, who is a one, three emotional generator. She is a jack of all trades and she's a sole purpose and business coach. Welcome, Karen. How are you doing today? Thank you Thank so you for much being here. for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. No, I was really excited. My sake was excited when you asked me. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to be here actually. And yeah, share the experience really of weaving human design into life. I think that's where the lessons can really drop in for people. Yes, absolutely. And so for everyone that's watching today, um, who are you, Karen? Where are you coming from? And what is it that you do? We were laughing about this beforehand. I know. Like, so <laughs> This is something that I always say I struggle with because I'm very multi-passionate. So um, what we got it down to, I really specialize in soul purpose and, and helping people with spiritual deconditioning, really, and healing so that they can step into their power. But the tools that I use are, um, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a business life and soul coach. I've got it written down because there's so many as I was writing down earlier. (laughs) I also read cards, tarot and oracle cards to really get into soul energy. I also express now more because I've known my human design um, in writing. So I'm an author now, self-published author and an abstract artist and um, shamanic teacher. So yeah, I just literally follow my joy and share it then. Yeah. Ugh, that's amazing. I'm I'm really excited for you to share more about your journey with writing and storytelling and that type of stuff because it it's like flowing through your chart. Um, and yeah, anyways, we'll get there. But before we get there, tell us a little bit more about your personal journey with human design. You know, like how did you get to this place and how has it changed your life? Brilliant. Really, yeah, I love that question as I was reflecting. Um, so um I'm gonna tell a bit of a story about my past because it's really I, I I didn't look at human design till your course, well, till just before I did your course, but I kept seeing it everywhere and I kept ignoring it. But I'm 48 now, I'll be 49 soon. So I realized that as we go through life, we kind of naturally live our chart more, don't we? Because we can't keep hiding the facade or being misaligned because it's too painful, it's too challenging. So at the start of the pandemic, I had an in-person yoga studio that was amazing. Oh, wow. um, but a, a week into the just before the lockdown, I had this intuition drop in saying close it. And I loved it. And I sat on the edge of the bed with my son. He do, he never comes in. And he said, and I told him, he said, well, you're in a box then, mummy, aren't you? You need to get out of the box. I was like, oh, so <laughs> I took everything online or, or translated all the yoga, did loads of study on how to grow an online business. And a year into this. I was teaching a, a normal yoga class and all, all I could see was knees and a hip and I couldn't hear them breathe. I couldn't adjust them. And I didn't want to open my computer at all. So I felt this and I was like, right, I'm going to have to stop this. So I did. And the day I decided I saw a advert for a Dharma coaching course with Sahara Rose. So I did that. And then right at the end of, the, at end of it, so this is when you follow your breadcrumbs, she introduced human design. I was like, oh, it's everywhere. Everyone's speaking about it. I don't want to do the same. Like everyone's speaking about it. But when she introduced it, when we spent about two days on it, I was like, oh, I feel seen. I feel validated. I feel like everything's falling into place. And it felt like home. I could literally see charts and I could not just see them, I could feel them. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, here we go. And um, <laughs> understanding my line one, it kind of get my so your line one is where you just need to learn and go deep isn't it and and that's something that everyone has said another course another course surely you don't need another course and my soul's like yes you do how can you not learn so to have that kind of external but also internal permission to keep studying was life-changing so now I know if I don't study my soul's not going to be happy Mm -hmm. so then universe popped you in front of me and I haven't looked back literally 
I didn't even search. You just popped up. That's it's so like funny. it's like the inst- it's like the internet knows what's on your mind sometimes, isn't it? It's funny. I get that same comment. It's like you just kind of showed up, or I found you on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you did. You just popped yeah. up. So I was like, okay. And then yeah, that was it. And now you've kind of like evolved it into so much more. And I love what it is that you're doing. And I can't wait to ask you more around that as well. But um, kind of going back to, you know, going into the journey, you started your human design learning journey, really learning about yourself. Obviously, you've been doing your own work prior to that. You have done a lot of, you know, that self-discovery process on your own. But was there anything in particular that human design kind of highlighted on you shine light on that you didn't know about yourself before I think what it really did for me which was a game changer was gave me permission to be more bold Mm -hmm. so to give me um I could recognize everything in the chart really the shadows and the gifts but really knowing that this is the gift and this is my soul's purpose it was like well what are you doing and so it helped me move past fear and fears like in my it's in my inclination cross to help to move past with fear isn't it so it was really that permission to be bold and be like well I'm just going to do this whereas before it's an idea and I might I will have done it at some point it was just like don't what are you waiting for so I think that's what it really gave me permission and also um, I say this part of my of all the things I've done over the years very spiritual to get you in touch with yourself And for me, human design helped me fall back in love with myself. Like, Mm -hmm. it's like seeing yourself and, oh, my goodness, I am actually amazing. I've got to find the centre. So, yeah, I am actually amazing. And seeing everyone else as these unique, beautiful individuals with a role, it was like, well, this is yours. Why aren't you going to live it? Mm -hmm. And so that's the real thing. It was like, come on, then you know especially at my age like no no more hiding like what he, what he doing so i'd say that's the that's a really big thing that i got from human design yeah it's almost like you have known it deep down inside all along yeah. and it just kind of gives you that mirror that reflection and paves the path for you it's like here this is you know the path that you're here to walk and just following your inner wisdom is going to allow all of that to unfold and more. And it's so beautiful because you are someone that is on the right angle cross of the four ways. Right. And when I first learned about this cross, I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Like the four ways. (laughs) Right. And, you know, over time I've learned, well, on one hand, like when you look at the mandala, so for anyone that's not familiar with this cross, it's consisting of the last four gates of each quarter in the human design mandala, right? And, you know, when you look at the different gates that are there, they're in different, completely different centers. You know, Karen, your conscious son is in gate 24. It's the rationalization. It's all up in the head in the Ajna, very much a thinker. And I can see that, especially combined with that one, three of yours, but it's also balanced by that instinctual, you know, body-based awareness, that alertness. I find it, it's such a balanced, um, cross in the sense that it's made up of so many different types of energy. You have like the intuitiveness, the, uh, sorry, the instinctiveness of the, uh, gate 44, you have the empathicness, the, of the gate 19. Um, and then you have the gate 33, which is like the wisdom, the storytelling and just being wise about your past experiences and all of that cool stuff. And so one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is, how has this kind of played out in your life or like, how would you interpret your cross for yourself? Yeah. So with the conscious sun in 24, um, so that's where you can inter- basically interpret, think deeply and take concepts and inspire people with it. And that's something I've done. So if I look at what I've always loved doing yoga, like the, the yogic philosophy is quite intricate really. And, um, quite it's the it's the 5d you know the quantum field really you're working with and the universal consciousness and so it's breaking that down and inspiring people with every yoga class really because I always teach deep I can't just go put your arm up um and so I've always done that and this is what really helped me write my book actually because I see the way in it with the defined I see the way in a certain the world in a certain way and I think and I process and then um, I can see the patterns as well part of, in my cross. So 
it was knowing my human design and knowing I've got the connection from Arjun to throw it's like oh I need to communicate this with the world so that gave me the permission to write my book as well um just knowing that I've got that I've got that and part of gate 24 as well is is working with fear mm-hmm. as well in the in the lessons in the shadow stage and that's something I've done so I have I have had breast cancer twice in my 30s so with that, I really decided to partner with fear or move past it, depending on, because we have fear, don't we? We've, yeah. we've got fear. And so I really got a, a beautiful relationship with it, actually. Do I need you? Thank you for keeping me safe. And I use this in business with business solopreneurs a lot to help them not limit themselves and to help move past fear. Mm-hmm. So that gate 24, it comes out in that a lot. And yeah, my teaching, yes. taking concepts and inspiring um, and people do say, oh, gosh, so inspiring. And they've always said it to me. Now I know that's like it's my conscious son. So, yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And one of the things that I've also learned about this cross is that it's very much connected to the nodes and the nodal cycles, you know, those eight and 18.6 year cycles. Have you noticed in your life that you've gone through those distinct kind of shifts? Um have they been dramatic? I know for some people they're like dramatic changes and for others, uh, maybe subtle changes, but I know you just mentioned that you went through breast cancer twice in your thirties. So I can, I mean, I can already imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I do go through cycles. It's where like everything changes, everything shifts and it's like future you, new version of you. Yeah, definitely without a doubt, but always a progression. Uh, It's all Mm -hmm. evolution really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I love how, um, you have the gate 30, you have the gate 33, the gate of privacy retreat. And I see this as, you know, it's one of the storytelling gates different from the 56, which you also have, right. (laughs) Um, but really storytelling based on past experiences, your own experiences, perhaps from others as well. How has that been reflected in your life? Is this something that you talk about in your book as well? or? Yeah, um, I talk about it in my book. I talk about it in coaching. So um, yeah, like just today I was coaching somebody in a, a position similar to something that I'd gone through. So I asked permission, Is it would it help you to hear my story? And it does. So coaching is normally about the other person. We're not normally here to share stories, but because of my chart, I know that that's one of my superpowers. And when I share my story and embodied experience, it can help people see the possibilities and the inspiration and relate it to their life instead of it just being a question or concept. Mm -hmm. I think telling stories is so powerful. It's what we've always done through the ages and pass wisdom down and that lived experience. And that's something I really try and specialize in being embodied, like with human design, um, after I did the course, I took a month to look to go into my own chart. I, I mean, literally cancelled all my work. So I was so fascinated, line one and line yeah. three, like, how was this in my life? And so I got to feel it so I could feel its power for me so I can help other people. I really like to do, what's my own story? Where mm-hmm. am I? So yeah, I share my stories all the time. And um, on inst- on it, social media, I'll tell my stories and that's what people find inspirational. Yeah. And you create that connection with mm-hmm. people that, you know, have no idea who you are, strangers. It's through these stories, through shared experiences that we create that deep connection mm-hmm. with others, right? People see themselves in you. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's just a beautiful thing. And Could you tell me a little bit, just out of curiosity, what's your book about? If you wanted to share a little bit. My book. (laughs) High level. My my book is called Overwhelmed and Other Words You Give Your Power Away To. Oh. Oh. Because basically, as as a coach, I hear all the time. And in my yoga students, I'm overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. And so the way I see life with my defined Ashna, I'm like, no, you're not. (laughs) <laughs> what, what is it what are you feeling what's underneath the overwhelm so my line one goes into the study of the word overwhelmed <laughs> and we yeah. break it down and it's really to help people get in touch with what they really feel and give the power back so overwhelm is the first chapter and then we look at um I call it the reasons not to I can't I should I must um time mm. busy deserve lucky all these labels where it's actually no um it's all within our power 
and about helping people. Um, I, I really want to put human design in it, but I thought, no, that's, that's too confusing. <laughs> this is my original concept. And um, yeah, it's just, I love it. I'm really proud of it, actually. And I self-published it because I didn't want anyone else getting involved. It's my, knowing my human design, it's my ideas. It's the way mm. I see the world that's needed. And yeah, a lot of people have said how it's helped them. Even my husband, he was like, he finished it, was like, mm, yeah, he's a generator. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he got <laughs> journaling and he was like, I'm not just a joiner, am I? I'm more than this. And I'm like, yes, you are. So yeah, it's my way of seeing the world as I've seen through people's stories and experiences and my own. So it takes you through um, being lost, having breast cancer and being in, in, a, in some victim mentality to the inner work that I've done, I did with my mind. Um, mm. Yeah, to, and people had said yeah, over the years, you're so inspiring, you should tell your story, you should tell your story. So I, it was there. And then um, we were going for a walk in the forest, not this Christmas, the Christmas before, and I, it dropped in intuitively. And I just said, I'm writing a book and it's called this. And he was like, brilliant. And then I created the space and I did it. That's amazing. So when you got that drop and you responded to that, what does that response for you feel oh, yeah. like? Oh, so, oh all the same right? response, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I love my safe response. Now I know about it. So if I um, love something, I'll go, mm. So I, I try and eat now foods that I love that make me go, mm. <laughs> And I've done my variables, which I love. And I like hot food, I always have. I don't like salad. So that's that's brilliant. But when there's a, an idea or something in front of me, if I feel, if I can feel myself leaning in or if I feel excited or I, I feel it as an expansive feeling, then I'll be like, oh, it's the right thing. And if it's a stretch thing, I feel that and I feel like I need to go to the toilet. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And that's when I'm like, oh, I really need to do that thing. Because I'm like, <laughs> it's like stretch me outside of my comfort zone, like my book. When I went to press the button to tell everybody about it, I was terrified. What are they going to think of me? Who am I? Who do I think I am? It was one of the scariest things I've ever done. Um, and it, my sake was like, oh, you need to press the button. And if it's somebody that I don't want to be around or an experience or something like that, I'll literally feel like I want to run away. So it's a contraction. Mm-hmm. Um and my husband said, you can't hide it in your face. And I think with a lot of sacral beings, it shows in the face as well. Even if you don't vocalize it, so it, it comes in the mm. face as well. And um, one thing that I thought was worth saying, actually, I'd created a course last year, Psychic Development Academy, and I didn't launch it because when I came to do it, I didn't feel anything in my sacral. Oh, wow. I was like, I don't feel anything. So I was like, well, I'm not going to do it then because literally I do experiment and live my design. I'm like, well, if my energy is not excited, I'm not going to magnetize anybody to it. I won't be showing up in my fullest expression and I won't be enjoying it. So I just cut it mm-hmm. <laughs> literally. So I really listen to my sacral. Yeah. And one question that I get asked a lot, and you kind of mentioned it in your process, but one question I get asked a lot is how do you differentiate fear from that? Like, you not wanting it, right? How, you mentioned you got the sacred response, but then there were also things coming up. So how did you discern um, that it was just your mind? That is such a good talking. question. I I believe that as sacred, I, th- I think that everybody, but as sacred beings, it's so important you know yourself and your body mm-hmm. um, to be present because really being a general, a sacred being is about being present in your body. So you respond. So I'd say that my feeling like I need to go to the toilet <laughs> is the excitement with a tiny bit of fear. So I know, and this is part of my chart, that fear will always be there because fear is fear of the unknown. And because we're limitless beings always going into the future, there's always going to be fear there. But if it interests me and excites me, that's what I focus on and the Mm -hmm. fear will quite often be there and I think it's really difficult to describe because it's a feeling and it's sometimes challenging to describe feelings so I think you know when you're in fear it's like I mean this is scary but 
a sacral response with fear because it's a stretch point. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, the way I feel it, I'm excited, then my brain kicks in with the fear and then the butterflies exactly. go. So that sacral response is boom. And then you go, you go. I, I love it when you when you ca- coach people and you ask the sacral a question and they'll be and then they'll, and then you see them go head all the reasons not to. So, yeah, yeah I'd say you get your response, you're excited and then it's like, but and then you drop into that fear feeling in your tummy. Absolutely. And yeah, I think that that's exactly how I describe it for myself as a splenic. It's like the moment I start having those conversations in my head, it's like, that's when I know I need to drop back down or, you know, just create some kind of sense of internal safety for myself so that I can actually act on what my splenic authority is telling me. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm totally with you there. It's like, it's not really body-based, but it's all just like, what if, what if, what if, and, and this and that totally. Um, and so as someone that is very in tune with your sacral and as a business business owner, um, how have you used human design to run your business or like how has strategy and authority kind of helped you become a better, better business owner for yourself, better it's, leader for yourself as well? It's just been so freeing. So my business won't make sense to anybody who doesn't understand human design or live their human design. Um, so it's given me freedom, really. So with my authority, my um, emotional authority, someone asked me a question, do I want to invest in something yesterday, my time in a program? And so I say to them, um, I take a bit of time to make a decision. I'm going to stick with this and I'll get back to you tomorrow. And it was a no. (laughs) So I have to say, no, thank you. (laughs) Whereas I used to commit my time and energy to so many things. I think learning my emotional authority so that I don't make it, I'm not designed to make a decision in the now was one of the most freeing things because I've got a defined will center. So I'd agree to do so many things in my business. And then my will center is, well, you're doing it. You said you'd do it. And it took me away from what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really discerning now. Um, so I sit with it and I've got no problem saying to people, I'll get back to you. And I'll sit and I'll feel that. And then ask my sacral as well. Um, and intuition will sit with it. So, yeah. So that has helped me commit to what I am here to commit to. Mm-hmm. And then my response, wait to response, which I was really triggered when I was like, I'm not waiting for anything, um, has really empowered me. One in the, uh, I embrace the sacral plateau now. So when there's nothing much going off, when it's a time to just kind of chill a bit and not create anything new, I really embrace that. I go into study, I hermit mode. I'm like, my line one kicks in. So I'm kind of about to do that for a few weeks. Um, But I laugh because my hermit mode and not doing much is very different to most of the world with my generator like aligned generator energy so I'm still doing lots but not as much so I'm going to go into Vedic astrology and really master that um and so yeah my plateau has really enabled me to keep quantum leaping really so I go within I master and then I pop out again without diluting that um and then the way that I flow so there's two instances because I love you know, I love my stories, so I'm going to share my yeah, stories of with course, you. Love it. <laughs> so um, the first one has happened recently. So um, I've got an open head center. So I've learned that I do not make decisions for myself from my head. I don't try and initiate or think about the next program to do or anything like that. So I I ask the universe now, what's the next best thing? So. Um, a few weeks ago, I love cre- um, creative. So I love creating Canva graphics and designing things. And um, I just said to the universe, I love doing this. I wonder if I could incorporate this in something. And my business coach said, Karen, I was showing him my creation. She's like, I think I might ask you to do some of this for me. That was one person. Yeah. And then I did a reading. Someone else said, I really need you to help me with my branding second person or within the space of 10 days and then the third person um I was helping with something else she said can you look at my branding for me so I'm like universe there's a, there's something here so <laughs> I put it on my list because I've got um, I've got a lot to do and then I know when the time's right that will be right so that's one direction I'm going to take um and then what was the other thing oh yeah no I was talking about that because I put my notes I've got prepared yeah the the psychic development academy I thought that into being because of scarcity what do I need to do next what's going to come next and Mm -hmm. when my sacral came to it it wasn't aligned it wasn't the right thing that needs to be a one-to-one so yeah I use it all the time in my business and one of the very freeing things 
I don't plan long term now. Um, it's like, what am I excited about? And I give myself that freedom to be fluid. So around Christmas, I had this idea, or oh, do a year ahead. Oh no, so, someone actually asked me, can you do me a year ahead card reading? I was like, my sake was like, yeah, that sounds good. So I put it on um, Instagram stories and sold out. Oh, wow. There you uh, go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I use it all the time. And if it doesn't feel good, I'm literally, I'm so bounded. I'm not going to do it. Mm-hmm. You just not. Yeah. And I mean, it makes total sense. You have a completely open G center. Oh no, wait, no, you don't. Yes. And open no. head, undefined G. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You have an undefined G center and yeah, I can totally resonate with not planning too, too far ahead because things will change anyways. And Every day. <laughs> like you said, it's like, exactly. And like you said, like sometimes when you do things spontaneously and just listen to that response, things happen for yeah. you. Um, and sometimes I feel like as business owners, we sometimes tend to overcomplicate things, um, and try to over plan things, over control things. And I understand if you are a CEO of a, you know, a company that has a lot of moving parts, but we don't always, not all of us need to be that. And not all, all of us want to do that either. (laughs) And so for, for everyone else, it's like, we can just do things simply trust our intuition, trust our gut, um, with that creation. And I love that you were following those breadcrumbs with the three, like, I think that's a perfect example of what waiting to respond looks like and noticing what is coming to you, noticing what's showing up, because I get this all the time where people ask me or like generators ask me, um, well, there's something that I want to do, but I'm not getting any signs. So like, does that mean I just have to wait still? And it's like, it's not about waiting for those signs. It's about noticing what actually is coming into your field, what is showing up in your reality and responding to those things, you know, noticing the patterns. And that's exactly like what you do. And I love that example as well. I want, um, sorry, Crystal, can I just no, share yeah, go this ahead. with you? Yes. This morning I was, I was coaching someone and, um, and this came up and I wrote it down somewhere. Um, it was a, it was a quote that just came to me. Oh, I can't find it now because in my notes, but basically, um, say a generator one, three, very much like me, um, undefined throat, um, Arjuna and head. And she mm-hmm. kept trying to think, and I uh, it said something like, when you're in your, he- oh, it gives me shivers, when you're in your head, you close your eyes to the universe. Ooh. Oh, I know, it made myself, I, was <laughs> like, and I wrote it down, I was like, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's true, yeah, when we're in our heads, we're not in our bodies. And it's that, as generators especially, I say everyone, you need to be in your body to see what's in front of you. Yeah, so I want to share that quote, but I can't find it in my notes, but. Oh yeah, when you're in head, it's like having your eyes close to the universe. I was like, oh, that's good. Oh, I... but that's what it's like, really. You're just going, I know best. I'm going to figure this out. And your body's like, well, I can't respond because you're here, not here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I struggle with that as someone with a large split. I have my defined mm-hmm. head in ajna and then my root and spleen. And yeah, it's work. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not perfect. Doing my best. That's why I need to like. <laughs> you know, doing physical activity for me is what keeps me in my body. Like I play soccer and, um, or football. (laughs) Right. And so that's one of the things that really helped me stay in tune with that. Otherwise I notice such a big difference mentally in my headspace when I'm not, um, consciously making that effort and yeah. But anyways, I'm kind of getting off topic there. That's, <laughs> that's no, like a I, whole new, yeah, it's another whole podcast, other thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess what I wanted to talk about now is, you know, you are a, I feel like Jack of all trades has like a negative connotation and I don't mean that in a negative way at all, but you're someone that is very multi, I think that's what I wanted to say. You are very multi-talented, multi-passionate, um, in your business, like I know you use a lot of tools to help support your clients go through their transformations in their business through their purpose. So how is it that you use human design and integrate human design in your business to support your clients? Well, whether they want a human design reading or not. So if (laughs) if they're not coming for a human design reading, I'll always ask permission to get their chart and get their information because whether um, I'm not taking, if they don't want a human design reading, it just helps me pinpoint 
and go in exactly and see exactly why they're struggling with what they're struggling with. So mm -hmm. if it's life coaching, I can see where the shadows are. Like just with my client this morning, the thing she was telling me, I could see exactly where it is in her chart and how to ask the, the best. So with coaching, it's very much asking the questions to help that um, client find their own truth and way through it. So I use it. It's like a cheat sheet. It's like, well, I can see this, this and this. Is this mm -hmm. how you're feeling? Um, stop thinking, be in your body more. It just helps me get to the root of the matter. And yeah. it's like, um, it's like if you can't see, it's all about the eyesight. It's if you can't see, it's like being offered a pair of glasses. No, no, thank you. Yeah. Like, no, I don't want to see clearly. I don't want to have the best tools. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, it just helps me get into it. And with business, the same thing, because we sabotage all the time. We put the limits on. So for business, it helps me help people see their own power and uniqueness and how to move past the limits and the conditionings. Um, and also, um, cause your course is amazing because you do the, um, Eva's course as well. So it helps you really go into, well, how to express yourself in your business. Mm -hmm. So I do human design readings and I do, um, for a set of four called going deeper where we focus on what the client wants to, but go through with my Dharma coaching course woven and go through the planets and the yeah. centers in more depth. And, um, yeah, it's. Yeah, I just it lights me up, and every time I'm doing a challenge at the moment about human design, every time I, I talk about it, I'm just so lit up. It's like, oh. well, and so if I'm excited, my business is going to grow as well. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I use it in everything I do, and even if I'm teaching a yoga class, or oh, actually, this is what's really helped me because I've got my defined Ajna, and because I work on myself before I knew human design, and I'm a quad left as well, mm -hmm. so I need organization. Yeah. So. <laughs> Before I knew human design, you kind of think, well, it's helping me. I want to share this with the world. Absolutely. But what human design made me realize is everyone's so wildly different. So I can't treat everyone the same. And my way isn't their way. Mm -hmm. So that was super powerful. So now I'll look, to where are their variables? Or oh, they won't need routine or they don't need to vary it up. So it just helps me. So in everything, yoga, you know, offering two options instead of saying, you must do it this way. It's like, you know, maybe you yeah. have a play with what feels best. So <laughs> everything. It's been one of the best things I'm not, I've not ever done. It's, yeah, no, it's so true. And I feel like I'm totally guilty of that as well. Assuming that my experiences, the way that I've lived life and, and have gone through things is the way. And I remember before human design, like I was, I was like experimenting with businesses and, and stuff like that. And the way that I would come up online was very just like, copy and paste from everything that I've learned. And it's like, you need to have a stance and be out there and like be an authority and all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, it was totally based on just my limited way, especially as a defined Ajna of seeing things, of doing things. And so um, human design just opened up my mind to the fact that, yeah, everyone is so different. Um, what might work for me is not necessarily going to work for someone else. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's just something that is so necessary for coaches these days. And I mean, whether it's human design that helps you see that or perhaps something else, but I feel like human design is just that great tool to really identify how we can even become our own leaders, um, and trust our own authorities in that way as well. Um, right. And so through the work that you're doing, is there anything that you're offering right now that you'd like to share with us? I would love to hear how we can. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Got a list now. I'll keep it short. So um, I'm working on a program which will probably be available Marchish time because I work quickly. I've got that man gen energy, even though I'm not. Um, well, you have all four motors. Yeah, I've got it's like <laughs> Define. people. Like, How do you do it? I'm like, well, doesn't and that that helped me actually because I used to sit there thinking, why are people not doing what they say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Oops. What, you said you want to. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. But obviously now I have more understanding of my of how I'm wired. Um, of really incorporating human design, soul, my, my soul purpose coaching and Vedic astrology, because I know I'm going to um, just absorb that. Um, but what's what's going off now? I do human design readings. Um, I'm starting in Feb, a nine-month journey called Enchanted. 
um, because when I was mentoring, when doing human design readings, everyone who had into well, we've all got intuition, but you know, some of the most intuitive gates or real signs of intuition, women were saying to me, but I, I'm not intuitive. And so I saw the response and my, my sake was like, respond to this. I saw the need to um, create this. So for about 20 years, I've done shamanic work, Reiki. Uh, I've always worked with my intuition. So Enchanted is a nine month program um, to learn how to do shamanic journeying, soul retrieval, um, hold space, do cacao circles. So I'm teaching basically my way of being. Oh. And I can remember Eva having a session with Eva once a one-to-one and she said, you need to share your way of being. You, you're not a teacher, you're here to share your way of being. And that really stuck with me. So that's that's available for early bird at the moment. Um, and yeah, I'm still doing my human design readings and everything. So that's really exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to start that. Awesome. And yeah, I'm going to leave all of Karen's information in the description. So you can go and reach out if you want a human design reading or join her enchanted program, which sounds amazing. I love it. And um, I guess to wrap things up for today, I wanted to ask you, and I always ask everyone, what is your favorite quote or mantra mantra that you would like to share with us? Well, at the moment, I need to provide that at the moment. And this is something I've been looking at a lot. So it's a Ram Dass quote, um, beyond all polarity I am. And so we were kind of talking about this with the defined Ashna. I see so much polarity. This is my way. That's my way. They're right. They're wrong. And all, um, everything, and I talk about this in my book, everything I'm interested in is the space between your own truth to move away from this. This is that. And, so, and, and this is human design is that in between, this is my uniqueness. And so, um, yeah, that it means a lot to me because the world's so divided. It's like, no, let's accept everyone where they are, whether we like it or not, and focus on that, that space between your own truth, where you are, where there is no right or wrong. So, yeah, that's my favorite quote at the moment. It will change quite cool. No, but that's where I am at the moment. That's beautiful. Ugh. Well, thank you so, so much, Karen. I feel like so energized by you. I love um, doing interviews and speaking to other gen generators, sacral beings. You just light me up with a lot of energy and it's just such a pleasure to have you, Karen. Thank you so, so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> Thank you so much.